What up, world? It's Festive Reverb here in the studio, hanging out and exploring MPE, MIDI polyphonic expression. It's been a hot topic amongst synth nerds for like the last few years. We've had a lot of controllers come out. We had lots of implementation of MIDI compatible VSTs and synthesizers. And we also have this great Osmos, which is the first keyboard that is built with MPE from the ground up. Expressive E kindly sent this over. And I'm glad to finally have one in the studio to dive in because y'all may know I love MPE, but I've only really used it in pad-based controllers like the Push 3 or the Linstrument. But it's nice to have an MPE keyboard in this familiar key layout where each note, you could just press it ever so slightly you could press it hard, you could bend it, you could shake it, you can glide upwards. The Expressive E Osmos has been out for a while, it's been widely covered. But one of the things that I really enjoy about this thing is the MPE Arpeggiator. You go over to the playing mode and you scroll down to the Arpeggiator and it's already on. So what I was saying earlier, is it's built with MPE in mind. So again, even the slightest touches can affect the overall appreciation. And depending on whatever patch you're on, you can assign lots of gestures to affect, of course, different parameters in that patch. And that's what's cool about it. But they also have a lot of built-in cool arpeggiation playback modes, like this chord arpeggiation mode. I mean, it's just really fun to get expressive with an arpeggiation. You could just... You can get a little bit deeper than just the playback modes. There's also two things that you could assign to the gestures of you pressing the notes. So you could just go right over here to assign and you could assign your pressure to say the gate, or you could change up the source of what you're doing by just going over to source and you could have the aftertouch do things. You could have the bend of the right to the note do things. You could have the bend to the left. You could do lots of different things, even assigning your pedal to different um, destinations on the arpeggiation. So that's just pretty cool. But of course, this was made for players in mind. And I could sit here and fiddle with chords and arpeggiations all day, but I figured I'll invite our good friend, William Kirk, to try this out. I know for a fact that he has not played any MPE anything before, and I know he's definitely haven't even seen the Osmos yet. So. Let's get William Kirk in here and see how he feels about this. Yo, what's, <laughs> what's up, up, brother? Man? Fest in the house. What's going doing? on, man? man? It's so good to see good you. Good to see you, man. Yes, yes. Back at it, you know. So That's how we do. Yeah. Oh, what we got going on up in here, man? Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. You lying, right? What's this? This is the Osmos by Expressive E. Oh. Oh, I heard about this. Now, this is real. This is like the real deal here. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah, so let's sit down. Let's just check yeah, it out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, man. This is the Osmos by Expressive E. This is an MPE keyboard. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with MPE at all. MPE, by my own recollection, is uh, very foreign to me. But this is something I've never seen before, and I've seen a lot of keyboards in my life as a keyboard player, played a lot of them, but this is a very unique situation. Well, this is why I wanted to get you in here, because um, I wanted to get your raw reaction to this, but all you really need to know about MPE, go ahead and, and press a note or play a note, play a chord even, go ahead. All right, well, I've never played anything like this before, so this is a real authentic reaction that's about to happen. Notice how you could just... Whoa. Press, move, and shake each note. What? All you really need to know about MPE is that with each note, you can control 
not just the pitch and volume like normally with MIDI controllers. You can control the timbre, you can control the wave shape if you wanted to. You could assign like the filter cutoff to certain movements of this thing. So just by pressing it or wiggling it or sliding upwards. Oh, that's dangerous. Yeah. So it's kind of like turning this more into an acoustic instrument than ever before. So this is the first MPE keyboard. I mean, just the little shake you did for me was that right there. I mean, now you're in a new territory as a keyboard player because the element of being able to move it. This is one thing that I'm already envisioning about using a keyboard like this is mo most of the time when you're playing a live show or performance, it could be a concert situation. You want to have a keyboard that can respond intimately to what you're doing. Sometimes you can't really get the full range of that with a standard keyboard, no matter how fancy or expensive the keyboard is. This right here, you know, you got like an intimate situation. You got the fog machines popping. You got the light shining and you got like the tweens and like the other fans like with their phones up and they're like, oh my God, you know, do something. And you're kind of like, okay, how can I set the mood? Just, just that right there. Yeah. I'm just seeing the whole place go up because I can, because they can experience that movement audibly and visually. You could also like adjust like sensitivity and also basically take these same gestures that you did and apply them to other things. Plus this thing has like over like 500 amazing sounds in here. You wanna dive into it a little bit? Oh, of course. You know I was gonna ask yeah, you about the sound. Yeah, let's get so, into it. Yeah. I don't know how often you play woodwind instruments, but let's try something out. For each uh, preset, you got macros here that you can control. Oh, the layout for me is all very new. Everything's to the left, so mm -hmm. it's not like you have to go up to find stuff Hit a bunch of knobs. like most controllers or keyboards. Everything is to the left, and then to the center is where your key bed is. So woodwind, this is where we're at. Let's see what happens if I play a woodwind patch. Oh yeah, some people are gonna get fired <laughs> because of this. <laughs> Jobs will be lost at the CSO, okay? Sure. <laughs> it's pretty wild, right? Oh yeah. Bold electric piano, which we had earlier, keys, the lead, mallets, pads, perks, plucks, organ. Bacteria, what is that? Where do you see that? There it is, bacteria, what is that? Sounds like an effects patch. Each one of these sounds are like really thought out, man. Yeah, even bacteria. <laughs> I'm in mallets right now. I don't know what's happening with mallets, but... Even as you play that lighter, it's like a different vibe. Versus when you go full press. Yeah. <laughs> and it actually responds very well to extremely soft touch, which mm -hmm. a lot of keyboards, you have to adjust the sensitivity or the velocity sometimes to get it to be very sensitive. This is just on the regular setting, but let's actually, since you bring that up, let's just go over here. Let's turn up that sensitivity up a little bit. Okay. And would you ever really play that light? Or would you maybe like start to play that light knowing that you could with something like this? The option to be able to play that light is rarely available on 
like a keyboard instrument where it's that present. Now, I'm here at insert coins. I don't know what this sounds like. I'm curious because something that says insert coins is going to lean me into a certain headspace. Let's see if this headspace aligns with what that is. I think y'all guessing what it is too. Ah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. What else could it have been? Game on. Yes. Let's That's go. what I'm talking about. So for that sound alone, if you don't get this for no other reason, insert coins is waiting on you. That's right. Is it like going slower as you press it more? It just slowed down. Yeah, no, that's that's good. That's just another setting I mean, on that pass. Yeah. yeah. Um, the power is abundantly wide. And here's another cool thing about it. So if you look to that far left and you see the uh, the one semitone. Uh, that's for the actual bending. So when you bend, oh, okay. bend these notes, you can adjust how much semitones, uh, oh. ra range of semitones you have in the bend. Yeah, it's I pretty see. wild. <laughs> you could do like Ooh. extreme intervals. As you go through uh, those presets, you were on the okay. sensitivity setting still, but if you just yeah. hit that, now you're on like the synth macros, which oh, you can okay. get as deep as you want, but I figured that you would actually appreciate kind of just having what's needed right there instead of like having a whole 10 pages just to like adjust the sounds you know and this is a layered situation because just when i thought that adjusting the bending parameters was enough now i'm getting down to another layer of it where it's detune the tone so you're not just locked into having to use this one sound with this one quality you exactly. can change the qualities within the sound and now you got like a whole different universe. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? Smeeb? It's not much of a smeeby sound. It's, it's smooth, but it's, it's called smeeb, you know? Yeah, we've been talking about all of the pitch bending and modulation you can do just on the notes alone, but they also included your traditional pitch bender and your mod fader over there to the left as well. Wait a minute, is this? Yeah. This is a pitch bend? Yeah, so it's like, that. This? That's, that's just supplemental in addition to, yeah. And of course you can plug in sustain and expression pedals, which are also, you can assign to other parameters in the sound or in the playing stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I'm assuming this here is like a control modulation. modulation. There we go. Now, I will say my mind did not identify these two slides as the pitch band and the modulation at first. Glad you mentioned that because I didn't know if these were like just dials or controls. But... Demo, electric piano, flute and reeds, keys, lead. Let's see what lead is. Now, the first preset on lead, after saw. Let's, let's go. So. Oh, that's funky. Actually, this reminds me of another feature that's pretty unique to this. Can I show you? Of course. Let's stay on this patch, and uh, they got this thing called Pressure Glide. So if we go over to the playing style, we go down here, let's turn on Pressure Glide. We go over here. Pressure Glide uh, it, like uses the pressure to actually like add like portamento. Oh, nice. Let's try that out. <laughs> 
Okay, so this is the standard setting for this feature. Mm -hmm. Semitone first, so. Go to minor third. That's crazy. Yeah. It's almost vocal and also like a horn or or wind instrument where you can get that, that little nuance yeah. that you can't normally get even if you're playing it intently with a piano or a keyboard instrument. For that one, it's all about whatever your taste is and you don't even need to use it because you weren't using it before. Yeah. And it was still pretty expressive, you know? Another rabbit hole, yeah. <laughs> you know, as if we need more rabbit holes with this. <laughs> if I have two keyboards and I'm using that second keyboard as a solo pad instrument, and it's like, okay, I get a moment. This is the moment where, as a performer, you can actually lean into it, like I said earlier. You can like. Yeah, that's why I feel like this thing will look great on stage. Um, I mean, just sitting here watching you rip it just makes me appreciate the look of it a lot more, you know? Yeah, and people will definitely go, hey, what's that thing? <laughs> you know, another key point is that it's actually pretty, it's pretty, pretty, pretty light. light. Yeah. It's solid, it feels very stable. It doesn't feel like it's cheap or anything, you know what I mean? Like, that's a big plus. <laughs> Do you get the feeling that after playing this for a while, you're gonna go back to your other keyboards and try to like press and move and shake it and be a little disappointed? That is the danger of this, is that you play this for a long period of time, you might get spoiled by how it responds. No other keyboard I've ever played responds like this because they're not made like this. You know what the cool thing is though, is this entire key bed is, it's got a mechanical build to my understanding. There's like no adhesive used in making it. They want it to be an evergreen thing that you could always fix and repair like if you break a key down the line. So you could just order a new key and do the repair yourself. Wow, that's major. Yeah. And that's something that most people don't talk about with new keyboards or new technology is how accessible is it for you to repair it? Because you might have gigs and things to do. You got to repair it quickly. And I mean, it's also forward thinking. Expressive E is well aware that they're like still ahead of the curve with MPE in general. But like I said, it's becoming more prevalent. It's getting put in a lot of uh, VSCs and plugins now are MPE compatible. Expressive E actually makes one as well. So the sounds that we're going to get out of MIDI polyphonic expression is going to be coming in for like probably in the next decade or so. So it's good that this thing is gonna have some longevity. Yeah, well, the future is now. Yeah. Obviously. All right, y'all, well, that's all we got for y'all today. Thanks for hanging out with us while we took that deep dive into MPE. I'm Fuss. I'm William Kirk. And y'all know what to do. Stay safe and keep creating. Peace.